Hey, what happened to him? Master, it seems that he slipped off and fell down from upstairs. He's dead. Don't be alarmed. He is alive. Okay, then let us continue. I need to reach Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. Before that, I need to strengthen the church in Miletus and Ephesus. In Ephesus, Paul called for the elders of the church. Brothers, you all know that I have thought publicly about Jesus. Many Greeks and Jews have joined our faith. But, Master, why are you going to Jerusalem? You know very well that they want to arrest you. Holy Spirit has asked me to go there. He warns me that in every city prison and hardships are waiting for me. What I want to convey is that you need to guard yourself from the enemies and none of you gathered here will see me again. These words of Paul really made them upset. They all wept, embraced him, and said goodbye to him. On the way to Jerusalem, Paul reached Caesarea and stayed in the house of Philip the Evangelist. A prophet named Agabus came down from Judea to Philip's house. Hello, Paul. Wow, is it not Prophet Agabus? What brings you over here? Paul, I have been instructed to convey a message to you. Could you lend me your belt? Please convey to me, Prophet Agabus. Holy Spirit says that in this way, the honor of this belt will be handed over to the Gentiles. Hearing what the prophet said, everyone gathered there pleaded for Paul not to go to Jerusalem. But Paul replied to them, Don't weep and break your heart. I'm ready not only to be wounded, but also to die for the sake of Jesus. Let's lots will be done. After consoling the believers, Paul and his companions went to Jerusalem. They met James and the elders from the church in Jerusalem. My brothers in Jesus, God has worked wonders in spreading his good news to the Gentiles. The church is growing fast in places like Ephesus, Greece, Macedonia, Philippi, and Asia Minor. Paul, we are very glad to know that the kingdom of God has reached the Gentiles through your ministry. But there is a problem. The Jews in Jerusalem believe that you have taught the Jews living among the Gentiles to turn away from Moses and not to follow the custom of circumcision. Then what is your advice for me? Look, we have four men among us who have taken the wall. You go with these men to the temple, join their purification rites, pay for it. The next day, Paul and the four men went to the temple and did the purification rites. On the seventh day of the rites, some Jews from Asia Minor saw Paul at the temple. Hey, y'all, look into the temple. Is it not Paul who was speaking about Jesus in Asia Minor? Yes, Nathaniel. He was teaching the Gentiles against the customs of Jews. Come, this is our chance to take revenge. Call all the Israelites gathered here. Fellow Israelites, come, see the man who's destroying our faith. He has defiled our temple by allowing Greeks to enter in it. Hearing this, the entire city was in turmoil. The people came from all directions. They seized him and closed the city gates. They wanted to kill him. 
Meanwhile, the commander of the Roman troops heard about the uproar, and he and his troops came to the scene. Hey, what is happening here? Do not take law into your hands. Who is this person? Sir, he has been destroying our fate. He has defiled our temple. The commander could not clearly understand what they were saying because of the noise. Listen, I cannot hear what you are saying. I'm arresting him and taking him to the jail for questioning. Soldiers, arrest him and bind him with the chains. Get rid of him! Kill him! Do you speak Greek? I am a Jew brought up in Tarsus in Sicily. Please allow me to speak to the people. Okay, you may defend your case. I am a Jew, and I was brought up thoroughly trained in the law of our ancestors. Then Paul described the full incident of how he changed from a persecutor of the followers of Jesus to the protector of the church. Then the Lord commanded me to leave Jerusalem and spread his message to the Gentiles, as the people in Jerusalem will not listen to me. When the crowd heard this, they shouted in one voice, Get rid of him! He is not fit to live! Take him to the barracks. People are really against him. He needs to be flogged and questioned to find out why the people are shouting against him like this. Is it legal to flog a Roman citizen who is not even found guilty? The centurion got scared when Paul said that he was a Roman citizen, and he went and told the commander. Sir, he says that he's a Roman citizen. Tell me, are you a Roman citizen? Yes, I am. Do you know that I had to pay a lot of money to become a Roman citizen? But I was a born citizen. The commander got scared because he had chained a Roman citizen. He let Paul free and to find out the truth, asked him to be present himself in front of the high priests the very next day. My brothers, I have been fulfilling all the duties entrusted to me by God. Hearing these words of Paul, the high priest Ananias gave orders to strike Paul. How can you bear hearing this blasphemy? Strike him on the mouth! God will strike you, you whitewashed wall. You are sitting to judge me, and you are violating the law. How dare you insult the high priest? Brother, I did not know that he is the high priest. Take Saul to the barracks else he will be torn to pieces. Huh, what am I seeing? Paul, do not fear. I am the Lord, your God. Speak to me, Lord. I'm listening. Be courageous, Paul. You have testified for me here in Jerusalem. Now you must testify for me in Rome. Meanwhile, a group of 40 Jews made a conspiracy and took a vow not to eat or drink until they killed Paul. They went to the high priest to tell about the plot. Master, we have taken an oath not to eat or drink till we finish Paul. But how are you going to do this? The commander and his troops are guarding him. Master, you and the Sanhedrin should petition to the commander that you need to question Paul for more information. On the way to the Sanhedrin, we will kill him. But Paul's sister's son heard about this plot, and he went to the barracks and informed Paul. Uncle, I have overheard a plot by the Jews to kill you tomorrow. Huh? They want to kill me? You go and tell the commander about this matter. The commander called for the centurions and told them to take Paul to the governor of Caesarea in the night itself, escorted by soldiers, horsemen, and spearmen. He also wrote a letter to the governor about Paul and recommended that Paul did not deserve to be punished. Felix kept Paul in Herod's palace under the protection of guards, and he waited for the accusers to come to Caesarea to begin the trial. Governor Felix, our greetings to you. 
we have come here to raise the complaints against Paul. Tell me, what has he done wrong to the Jews? He belongs to the Nazarene sect and has been stirring up rights among the Jews all over the world. He has desecrated the temple and that is why we seize him. Do you have anything to counter to these allegations? Your Excellency, I had gone to the Jerusalem temple to worship. I have not argued with anyone there. I have not stirred up the crowd anywhere. But why do they say that you have desecrated the temple? I had come to the Jerusalem temple after many years to present offerings. I had undergone purification rites as well. Few Jews from Asia Minor created situation and the trouble in the city. I am deferring this case till the commander of the army, who was a witness to all these incidents, come over here. Felix kept Paul under the protection of guards in prison, and he was given little freedom to mingle with his friends. Two years passed by, and Felix was succeeded by Festus. When Festus was in Jerusalem, the chief priest and the elders met him and complained about Paul who was jailed in Caesarea. They wanted Paul to be taken to Jerusalem for trial, but Felix told the elders to come over to Caesarea. Give me Paul for a cross-examination. Okay, my lord. Now, let me hear what you have got to say. Your Excellency, he was forcing the people to go against teaching of Moses and is against circumcision of the newborn. Do you have anything to defend? I have not done anything against the Jewish law, temple, and Caesar. Festus wanted to do a favor for the Jews, and he asked Paul, Are you willing to go to Jerusalem and stand a trial there? I'm standing in the court of Caesar. I have not done anything against the Jews. I am making an appeal to Caesar. Now that you have appealed to Caesar, you will go to Caesar. Paul and a few other prisoners were handed over to a centurion called Julius, and they all boarded a ship to Italy. Sir, it is dangerous to travel through the rough sea. We need to halt at the nearby port. Let me discuss the matter with the captain and the owner of the ship. Captain, can we halt at the nearby harbor? It is dangerous to travel like this. Now, the winter is approaching. This harbor is not suitable for docking. We need to move on. The sea calmed a bit. They set sail and started moving with the gentle south wind. But very soon, the ship was caught in a hurricane. They all reached safely on the shore, and the name of this island was Malta. It has been 14 days since you ate proper food. So before we get on to the island, let us all eat food. On the island of Malta, Paul performed a lot of miracles. He healed many sick people. the co-passengers set out to the sea and finally reached Rome. My brothers, I have not done anything against the Jewish law or customs. I was arrested in Jerusalem and handed over to the Romans. What? Why did you come over to Rome? I had made an appeal to Caesar for a fair trial as I could not get any justice at Jerusalem. We have not heard anything bad about you from Judea, but we want to know about your views on the sect people are talking everywhere. For two years he stayed in Rome preaching about Jesus boldly and without any hindrance. But uncle, 
Then what happened to Paul? Was he not tried in the court of Caesar? Hmm, there is no biblical reference to the trial of Paul. Uncle Francis, was Paul martyred? Paul is believed to have been beheaded by Emperor Nero in AD 67. Oh, the same emperor who was playing fiddle when Rome was burning? Yes, Joan. He was buried outside the walls of Rome, and the present-day Basilica of St. Paul outside the walls is constructed above his tomb. Uncle Francis, the life and work of St. Paul is very exciting. But is he not remembered for the books he has ordered? Yes, Joan. Out of the 27 books of the New Testament, 14 are attributed to him. Wow! The story of St. Paul was really moving. Uncle Francis, when is the Feast of St. Paul? June 29th is celebrated as the Feast Day of St. Paul. He has summarized his experience of Christ in the following words. If God is for us, who is against us? Who will separate us from the love of Christ? That's all for now, children. Goodbye. Goodbye, Uncle. <laughs>